by the time somebody's sitting in my office, I am not going to have any judgment. I'm not going to have any question or debate about should they be there. Is this the right place for them? I know they've done that homework. They have already agonized over it. They've already come to that decision. If you were a young woman growing up in the Latter-day Saint or, or Mormon faith in the 70s and 80s, one of the things that you were taught is that women were supposed to stay home and raise children. And you weren't supposed to go into the workforce at all unless you really, really had to. I thought that, that my background was so unique and different that divorce hit me so much harder than it hit anybody else. I actually found out it was pretty common and that most people going through divorce have those same feelings. They have that same questioning of, can I succeed at anything if I fail at this? Is this the right thing for me to do? Should I be willing to sacrifice more? What will my church, the world, my neighbors, my children, my in-laws think of me when this is over? Good morning and welcome to episode one of Divorce Decoded with Bolton Law. I am super excited to be here this morning. This is our very first podcast. Uh, we're hoping that this will be out there for a long time and that uh, we'll catch a lot of listeners around the way. And I thought it would be a great opportunity to use this first episode to tell you a little about myself and what we're going to be talking about on Divorce Decoded and why you should care what I have to think or, or what my guests have to think about these topics. So I am Ruby Bolton, and I am the founding attorney of Bolton Law. Bolton Law is one of the most established divorce boutique firms in the Houston area. We're one of the largest firms in Montgomery County. We're located in the Woodlands, and we specialize in divorce. So on this podcast, we're going to be talking about all things divorce, and that would include what you need to think about when you are facing a divorce, the different drivers and factors that end up with people getting divorced, what is effective in a divorce battle, how to help uh, co-parent after a divorce, how to make the process easier on your children, how to keep your sanity, and how many people have been through this journey and what they've learned along the way. And my thought and my hope is that this will be very useful, not just to clients of our firm or future clients of our firm, but my intention is to put a lot of helpful information out there that will help people, so to speak, divorce better. And I know that that sounds really strange, but if you think about it, there are some divorces that are just terribly destructive and toxic, and everybody exits that divorce hating their spouse. Frequently, the children hate both of their parents. Sometimes they just violently hate one of them. You get a lot of people coming out of that process feeling like they've been raped by the system, that they have, have lost their property, their dignity, their privacy, and that it has been one of the worst processes of their life. Now, I'm not here to tell you that you're going to come out of a divorce that, that follows the guidelines that we're going to give and be like, wow, that was fabulous. I can't wait to get divorced again. I know that nobody goes into a marriage looking forward to getting divorced. When somebody makes that first call to our office, I am extremely aware, and so is every member of our team, that they're at a low point in their life. And maybe that call, that first call to a divorce attorney is the hardest thing that they've ever done. But at the end of the day, if you are in a marriage that is not working, if you are in a unhealthy situation, even if you've got something better waiting for you on the other end of that, and on the other side, let's say you don't want to get divorced. Let's say the other party is wanting a divorce. And you're just sitting there saying, how do I wake up from this nightmare? How did this happen to me? This is, you know, my idea of the worst outcome ever. You are still married right now to someone that doesn't want to be married to you. 
And that is a terrible place to be. And so to those people in that situation, I'm going to tell you there's something better on the other side for you too. Because even if you don't want to be divorced, you certainly don't want to be married to ever, somebody that is waking up every morning and looking at the person on the pillow next to them and thinking, why? Why are they here? Why do, why do I want to be here? So a large part of my premise and a lot of the reason why I want to do this is because I want to help reframe the divorce process into a door into another opportunity. Because by the time somebody has come to me, that decision is made. You know, I, I've talked to, you know, the other members of my team and thought, if someone is sitting in our chair, you know, they have thought about divorce. And they've probably Googled it. And they've searched it. And they've looked at different divorce lawyers. And they've scheduled an appointment. They've maybe taken time off from their day. And they have come into our office. They have already put a whole lot of thought into it. And so by the time somebody's sitting in my office, I am not going to have any judgment. I'm not going to have any question or debate about should they be there. Is this the right place for them? I know they've done that homework. They have already agonized over it. They've already come to that decision. My job and the job of, of the entire team of Bolton Law is to help people through that process and to help them see it as an opportunity to restart their life and maybe go forward with what they want and, and where they would like to be. So that is kind of the, the genus behind Divorce Decoded. I want to talk about how we get divorced, why we get divorced, and how we can make that process easier on everybody involved and how we can make it feel more fair and maybe more less toxic and how to help the parties involved come through it and feel like they were heard, they were understood, that they had somebody help them keep hold of the issues that really mattered, that were going to matter long term, and walk them through that until they were feeling more themselves. So who am I now? I, I'm the founding attorney of, of Bolton Law. Like I said, I am board certified family law attorney. That actually makes me pretty rare among attorneys. Fewer than 1% of all the attorneys in Texas are board certified in family law. And that means that the state bar has certified that I'm an expert in this topic that I know what I'm talking about, that I've got a certain level of experience, that I have got uh, background and knowledge, and that it has made up, you know, a given percent of my practice. I am also on the Legislative Review Committee for the uh, Family Law Section of the State Bar, and what the, I, I have been for uh, probably a decade now. And what that means is that when legislators uh, are writing bills that affect family law, the family law section, we will kind of review those and let the legislators know how it's going to affect the current system. And a lot of times, legislators aren't lawyers, and they don't know how the law is going to take effect when it's written and passed. And what we do on the Legislative Review Committee is we try to let them know. You know, this is what's new about this bill. This is the effect that we think it's going to have. This is the effect that we feel it will have before the judges. And then, of course, we, the legislators make up their own minds and their own decisions. But we just don't want any surprises. We want them to know what the effect of that's going to be. I am also on the professionalism committee for the state bar. And we uh, have as our goal to increase professionalism in the field of law. And what that means is honesty, integrity, politeness, um, that we deal with respect with each other, with our clients and judges to attorneys. And our mission on the professionalism committee is to help to make, to improve the rate at which people feel we are successful in those goals in the field of law in general. So 
At this point, I have been practicing for 30 years. I just attended the 30th reunion of my graduating law school class. I went to the University of Texas. And I thought it might be interesting for all of you that I hope will be joining us as we make many, many podcasts in the future to know a little bit about who I am and how I came here. So I'll start with the fact that I am one of five children. I was born into a traditional Mormon household, and my family was very, very religious. And when I say very religious, I mean in my entire memories of my childhood, I do not think I could come up with four to five days that we did not begin the day with a family prayer, that we did not end the day reading scriptures together saying a prayer together. We went to church multiple times a week throughout. And I had also, I learned to really honor my ancestors who had been with Joseph Smith and Brigham Young and crossed the plains. And I mean, a very, very religious background. So why does that matter? Well, because if you were a young uh, woman growing up in the Latter-day Saint or or Mormon faith in the 70s and 80s, one of the things that you were taught is that women were supposed to stay home and raise children. And you weren't supposed to go into the workforce at all unless you really, really had to. And by really, really had to, I don't mean that you couldn't live in a good neighborhood unless the mom worked. I mean that you couldn't have running water unless mom helped to earn money, that, that things were very bad. Now, I understand that now they're not, not nearly so strict on that, but that was a household in which I was raised. And there were times when I was going through high school that I really liked the idea of, of having a career or working, that I kind of struggled with this. But for the most part, I accepted it pretty wholeheartedly. And I did my undergraduate at Brigham Young University, And I got a degree in English. And you might say, why? What are you going to do with English? Well, I didn't have any intention of doing anything. My intention was that I would get married, that I would have a large family, that I would stay home and raise my large family, and I would support my husband. And so I felt I had the luxury of choosing any degree I wanted. Now, I did feel a huge hurry to get it very, very quickly. And that was because it was very common in my world at that time for women to get married midway through college and drop out and quit. And that was why I skipped a grade. I started college when I was 17. I graduated when I was 20. I went to school year round. I was in a very big hurry. And that was because my assumption was that once I got married and had children, that would be the end of my formal education. And I really, really wanted to get that degree. So when I was at Brigham Young, I did marry, or I did find, uh, fall in love with a Mormon man who had the intention of becoming an attorney. And I graduated, took a job, went to California, at which point he's like, no, wait, I really do want to get married. Please come back. And I immediately, obediently quit my job and and moved back to Provo, Utah, where he was, which I did not consider a sacrifice. It was what I had wanted to do, right? But an English degree uh, for a newly married woman in Provo, Utah in 1990 was worth exactly nothing. And I could not get a job to save my life, hardly. I ended up working as a temporary secretary for like $5 an hour. And so my ex-husband, which you'll hear about later, suggested, well, why don't you go to law school? You did really well when I was, you know, taking those practice LSAT tests. And my thought process at the time was, yeah, I, I loved going to college. I'd always enjoyed the practice of law. And by that, I mean I'd been in the mock trial team uh, when I was in high school. It was something I liked, and I thought it will be nice because when my husband comes home from a hard day of work, I'll understand what he's talking about. I'll be able to, to have intelligent conversation with him. And, you know, if he gets overloaded, maybe I'll even do a few 
you know, a little legal work on the side. So I liked that idea. So my ex-husband was from Cypress, Texas. So he knew that he wanted to come back to Texas. And so we made the decision that I would apply to the University of Texas while he finished up getting his law degree from BYU, which is J. Reuben Clark uh, Law School. And that's what I did. I applied to UT. I loved law school. I did very well at law school. Um, I really enjoyed it. And I will tell you, when, when I graduated, we opened practice. It was Bolton and Bolton. It was my intention to have children right away. In fact, I, I had a stillbirth while I was in law school. Um, and I had my oldest daughter when I was 26, just, I think, a year after I finished law school. And so even though my name was on the door, and I kind of enjoyed it, and I took some cases. It was still very much, in my view, kind of a temporary thing. Well, you know, life never works out quite the way that you think it will. And I will tell you that I always did work quite a bit in the law firm. So I had chosen estate planning and probate as kind of my niche area, and that was because I had the intention of having this very large family and working part-time, maybe 10, 15 hours a week. And it seemed more compatible with that. So my ex-husband, he did a fair amount of family law. And what ended up happening is I would take cases when he was busy or when he and the client had, you know, a disagreement. So right from the beginning, I did do some family law. Uh, I always felt you know, a lot of empathy for my clients that were going through divorce, but I definitely had a little bit of the feeling that, that this would never be me, right? So I had five children in 10 years, and they are amazing people, and I loved being their mother. One of the recurring tensions in our household was actually that I wanted to work as little as possible, and my ex liked me being in the office. So as it turns out, you know, you never know what's going to be best for you or what God has in store. I'm so glad that I got a law degree. I'm so glad that I had my hand in because when our marriage really began falling apart, I knew how to practice law and we had a law practice. Now, we we took quite some time getting divorced, and I will tell you it was something I really, really struggled with. And I struggled with it because my definition of success required a marriage partner that was the father of my children. It was part of what I had always learned, meant that you were successful, meant that you were happy. I very much had this mindset that I did not want my children to come from a broken home. And so I was willing to make, really looking back, way too many sacrifices in terms of dignity, quality of life, relationship model that I was giving my children. I was willing to sacrifice a lot of those so that at the end of the day, my kids could say, oh yeah, my parents are together. But despite that, it, it became apparent that, that that wasn't going to work. And I ended up getting divorced. And at the time that I got divorced, I looked at what I knew how to do. And estate planning and probate was very much a part-time job for me. And I didn't really see the potential at that time for that to become a full-time job. But there were a whole lot of family law cases and people needing help in that area. And I knew that in order to be successful in the field of law, you really have got to specialize. You've got to pick something and learn a whole lot about it. And so I decided that my area was going to be family law. When I first began doing it, I was so conflicted about it. Like I didn't even like to tell people when I met them, I'm a divorce lawyer, because what would they think about me? You know, you've got the whole, you know, what God has joined together, let no man put asunder. And I just had very conflicted feelings about that. And what changed my mind over the intervening 15 years was seeing how my divorce affected my own family. And even though I was very, very resistant to getting divorced, and even though some of my children did not want me to get divorced and even pleaded with me not to, 
I think all five of them who are happy, healthy, productive adults today will tell you with no hesitation that their lives are much better because I got divorced. And I also got to see how much difference I could make in that process in the lives of my clients. I saw that my experience, which I considered so rare, right? I thought that that my background was so unique and different that divorce hit me so much harder than it hit anybody else. I actually found out it was pretty common and that most people going through divorce have those same feelings. They have that same questioning of, can I succeed at anything if I fail at this? Is this the right thing for me to do? Should I be willing to sacrifice more? What will my church, the world, my neighbors, my children, my in-laws think of me when this is over? And I developed a real love for the practice of family law because I feel like we have an opportunity to make such a difference. And we are helping people through such a cathartic experience, such one of the big crises points of their life. And I do feel that if it is done with concern, compassion, um, it can really, we have an opportunity as divorce attorneys to actually help people reorient their lives in a positive direction much more quickly. And that brings us back to what I'm doing here with Divorce Decoded. I want to decode all of those aspects of divorce that trip people up. It's not going to be a smooth and painless ride for anybody but we can make it better. And I want to. I want to be able to reach out to as many people as possible and share what I have learned, not only from my experience being divorced with five children, but also 30 years of representing people in divorce. I want to share what I have learned and how we can improve this process. I have kind of gone through my electronic Rolodex. I've learned, met so many people who are influential in my field, and I've talked to a number of them. We are going to have some amazing guests, and I cannot wait for all of you to meet them. We'll have some sitting judges, former judges, expert witnesses, psychologists. There are so many people in the world of divorce that have knowledge to share, and I cannot wait to introduce them to you all. So that being said, welcome to Divorce Decoded with Bolton Law. I am so excited to have you along on this journey. If there is a topic that you are really impatient to hear us cover, please send us a message. Uh, We absolutely are are wanting to address the things that you must want to hear. So let us know what those items are, and we will uh, serve them up.